Welcome to Episode 5 of Woo Woo for the Skeptic. I am your host, Kim Polander. This week's episode is all about numbers. I will be talking to a numerology expert who will explain how numbers can relate to personalities, house energies, and themes for the year. As always, thank you for listening, and now on to the episode. The history of numerology has been debated over the years. Out of that debate, three forms of numerology have emerged, Kabbalic, Chaldean, and Pythagorean. The most popular form being Pythagorean. This method was developed by Pythagoras, the Greek mathematician and metaphysician of the 6th century. Most of you probably remember the Pythagorean theorem, or at least recognize the name. Pythagoras was focused on the principles of mathematics. He believed that every element in the world could be expressed through numbers and created a system that was then added on to by Greek philosophers that came after him. In that way, Pythagoras did not invent numerology, but his theories led to what it is today. So, in the Pythagorean system, numbers are assigned to letters in the alphabet. Using those assignments, you can then calculate numbers assigned with your name and date of birth. The main numbers are 1 through 9, with master numbers being 11 and 22. My guest for today's interview is Carrie Samuels, a well-known numerologist and happiness coach here in San Diego. And before we get to the interview, it would be beneficial for listeners to calculate a couple of numbers beforehand. And if you don't want to add it up yourself, Carrie has a great calculator on her website located at carriesamuels.com slash calculator. And her name is spelled K-A-R-I-S-A-M-U-E-L-S dot com. For those of you who aren't near a computer, here's how to calculate the numbers. First, for your life path, add up all of the numbers of your full birth date. For example, if you were born on 11-10-1978, you would add each number. So you would break down each individual number when adding them and keep adding until you get a single digit number. So 11-10-1978 would be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1, plus 9, plus 7, plus 8. This gives a total of 28, which you would add together again, so 2 plus 8 equals 10, which you would then add together again to get the single digit number, so 1 plus 0 equals 1. So the number 1 would be your life path number. It's much easier to see the process on paper, so I would encourage you to go to Carrie's calculator, which makes calculating your life path and house numbers super easy. And now that you hopefully have your life path and house number ready, let's move on to the interview with numerology expert, Carrie Samuels. Hi everyone, I am thrilled to have Carrie Samuels on my show today. Carrie is an intuitive numerologist and happiness coach. Over the last 20 years, she has helped thousands of people worldwide align with their soul's purpose, tap into abundance, and reclaim their natural spiritual gifts. Featured in Hay House Radio and reaching nearly 1 million views on YouTube, Carrie is taking the world by storm with her groundbreaking techniques and revolutionary approach to numerology and energy healing. Personally, I love Carrie's Facebook posts as they are always inspirational, motivating, and really insightful by how they take into account numerology and planetary aspects. And I never miss her monthly energy forecast videos on YouTube, which offer great insights for the month ahead. Carrie, welcome to the program and thanks for being here. Oh, thank you so much. And how sweet. That's wonderful that you enjoy the videos and daily posts. Thank you. That means a lot. Yes, your positive energy just comes through and it's just very lightning. Thank you. Well, that's interesting because there's a lot of people who, as you know, have maybe like a fatalistic view of astrology and numerology. And that's just not how the universe is, is it? Right. Yeah. (laughs) It's all about opportunities and how you navigate the energy. And so it's nice that you appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's first talk about your personal background and just how you became involved with numerology. Well, let's see. I'm going to go back. (laughs) (laughs) So I was always very creative. And so I think creative people in general are inclined toward mysticism, right? Mm. Because it's right brain 
any creative act, you're channeling the divine, truly. That's what that is. And getting in the zone. So I used to do theater. I used to be an actress. Got very burnt out on it and then wrote children's books. And then uh, through the process of writing, opening up my channel, I realized that I have intuitive gifts, that I'm psychic. So I started doing readings for people and the way I encourage people to learn how to connect with their intuition is usually through some kind of tools, divining tools, such as the tarot. I personally love the tarot because it's basically like having a dictionary, a translation between you and the divine. It's like lucid dreaming on paper. Mm, mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful tool. And so I started with tarot to help me channel my intuitive gifts. And the tarot is actually based on the tree of life and the Kabbalah, very linked to astrology and numerology. So I learned astrology and numerology through the tarot in real life by working with clients and then really seeing patterns. So it wasn't just like I read things in a book. I started to see patterns with people with different life path numbers. Life path numbers meaning that's the numerology equivalent to your sun sign. It's based on your birth date. So because I had the opportunity to see hundreds and hundreds of people and ultimately doing readings for thousands of people, you pretty much get a sense of <laughs> the depth of of numbers and, and the patterns. But it did start out through the tarot, took on a life of its own because I, I found it unbelievably, shockingly accurate. Shockingly. Mm. <laughs> and so just like astrology has different applications. You can look at an astrology chart and you can predict energy that's up and coming. So you can't predict what will happen, but you can predict energy trends, just like weather. We have a cold front. We have a stormy front. So basically, when people talk about predictions in astrology or numerology, they're mostly talking energy forecasts, how to ride a current of energy and how to best navigate it. And you can also look at it to dive deep into personality patterns psychological patterns in a person's blueprint. So it's really like the blueprint of your soul. So it's actually shockingly accurate on both fronts. Hmm. And I like that aspect of describing it as a forecast. That's very helpful and descriptive. And then how your own blueprint would ride the wave of a forecast. That makes sense. Yeah, because you're made of a specific type of chemistry. If you're a fiery person, you're going to have a different kind of nature. Fire wants to get up and move and it's passionate, right? So that's different than a watery person, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So there's different patterns of energy within you. When we understand our true nature, and I know you do human design, it's all about understanding your true nature. Really, in, in our society, we're made to be one thing. This is security for you, so go do this. Not everybody fits into that. It's so helpful and liberating to know, hey, I'm the kind of person that will never, ever, ever want one job or one career my whole life. And nothing wrong with me. You know, but you could see these things in someone's blueprint. You can see them in their numbers, their astrology. You can see what people's fears are even. There's spectrums of everything. I'll take myself, for instance, I'm a Virgo, right? I'm very fastidious about a lot of things, my work, hygiene, health but I can be very sloppy. <laughs> and there's different spectrums of Virgo, right? It depends on how it manifests. As in my work, I am a perfectionist. But like in other things, I could care, like, you know, I'll go out, I'll have bed head, like whatever. <laughs> you know, like, like I, I'm not always perfectionist. Ask my husband. So you're, you're different spectrums. There's different ways that these personality types or these energies will manifest through you. So there's nothing cookie cutter about it. It's definitely a science, such as with Virgo, perfectionism will manifest somehow. Each sign has their thing. If you get a Siberian Husky or if you get a Poodle, you can expect different behaviors. We don't do that with people. We're like, you're just one thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know this from human design. There's definitely different behaviors. You can see introversion in a person's chart. You can see artistic ability. You can see emotional sensitivity. You can see people who aren't as emotional. It's basically in your chart. 
it's like having a breed handbook. Okay, <laughs> so this one needs to run. <laughs> so it is is very practical application because it's liberating once you understand who you are and who you aren't. Yeah. If you're empathic, you're not going to be the kind of person who loves crowds and fluorescent lights and wants to work at, in the Disney store in a mall necessarily. Mm -hmm. There's certain people that need to work alone or be alone all the time. And you need to know that when you're in a partnership or when you're in your job, you need to know these things about yourself. Otherwise, you're going to think there's something wrong with you. And really, it's just you're not honoring your true nature. And just like with anything in nature that wants to grow and thrive and blossom, you just give it the right nutrients, the right environment for what it needs, grows and blossoms naturally. That's a great way to put it. So when we look at the spectrum of numerology in a person, how would someone go about starting to dig deeper into how they are wired? Like with astrology, right, you want to start with the basics. So with astrology, we have our sun signs. I always recommend getting your chart done by a professional. There's numerology reports that you can get that really give you what your patterns are. There's Matthew Goodwin Oliver. He put something together that really combines the numbers for it. He took all his genius and then put it in the report. So you can get a numerology reading specifically around numerology versus astrology? Yes. I always recommend people get their astrology charts done too. By a person, if you can, on YouTube, there's so many astrologers now doing videos. And if you find someone you connect with, that's great. Numerologists, there aren't that many out there, oddly enough. That is interesting. There are so many astrology people out there. So that's why I was really grateful that you came on the show, because there just aren't that many people who specialize in numerology. And it's just so insightful for a person. It is. Thank you. It's funny. It's getting sexier. <laughs> I heard them mention it on Broad City the other day. I'm like, oh. yeah, we got some street cred now. Um, it's definitely getting trendier, which I'm grateful for. Although it could get messy, we don't know, <laughs> says the Virgo. But um, <laughs> but see, when I was learning numerology, I only studied life path numbers for about five or six years. That's all I studied mm. because there was so much in that. I didn't even need to know more. You can learn on my website. I have a resource to know your life path number based on your birthday. The beauty of numerology, and this is why I'm more of a specialist in numerology, even though I do astrology I'm not a master astrologer in that sense that all the little aspects, I'm telling you, I'm too psychic for that. That's too many things. <laughs> yeah, you start getting information from other channels. and <laughs> Yeah, I work with archetypes, right? So the beauty of numerology, you got nine single digit numbers. With that, you have infinite possibilities with those nine numbers. And then you start seeing them in your life. I do have a, a guide, got house numerology and like numbers that you see and your life path number and your personal year number. It's all right there. And it's so easy, so easy. And this is a free resource. So that has like all the basics in it that I thought people would want to know. Okay. Well, we will definitely include a link to the calculator. That's a great idea because even adding up numbers on paper just from your birth date, you know, you can always add in one number wrong and then that sets you off on the wrong foot. So. Yeah. People get very confused and there's different ways of doing it. Actually, one of my favorite books, it's not based on the traditional system, Pythagoras or Chaldean numerology. It's Dan Millman's book. He wrote The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, but he also has an amazing book called The Life You Were Born to Live. It's so fascinating. I read that a few years before I even started studying tarot and numerology, and it blew my mind because it's so accurate. Uh, to this day, I still think it's incredibly accurate. So that's Dan Millman's The Life You Were Born to Live. Very good. And oddly enough, The Complete Idiot's Guide to Numerology <laughs> is so good. But anyway, those are like books. My free e-guide, it makes it super easy and simple for just easy peasy, learn the basics. You don't have to sit and study it. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. What happens is then you start seeing numbers everywhere, your patterns. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm learning about the number two because my mom's a number two. Now I see two, two, two all the time or two, 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 two or, or whatever it is. Then you start seeing these number messages. Yeah. And I see numbers all the time. And when you go online to query them, there are so many different explanations. I love the idea that 
yeah, a number two can represent your mom um, or it can represent angels or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever resonates with you. Yeah. So the thing is, once you learn the basic nine number general meanings, then you can interpret these numbers yourself when you start seeing them in the world. Yeah. So let's just start with the life path numbers the main personality number, would you say? Yeah, it's equivalent to your sun sign. It's it's how you operate. Okay. It's the kind of breed you are. So let's just go through the different numbers for a life path. Yeah. And so basically, so that's carriesamers.com forward slash calculator. But I want to teach people really quickly. You just take your month, your day, and your four-digit year, add them all together across. And then if you get a two-digit number like 23, you add two plus three add that again until you get a single digit, that's five. Okay. I just want people to know in case they're just jogging or whatever and they can't, they yes. can't get to it. <laughs> I want them to be able to follow along. Let's say you're December 13th, 1920. So you add one plus two for December plus 18, one plus eight plus one plus nine plus two plus zero. You add that all across and you get whatever double digit number and then you add that. Okay, perfect. Again, th these numbers apply for life path and also generally if you see them, in the world. So one is the first number. So it's all about being original, innovative, having ideas, inspiration, insight. And you, you notice the letter I, all those innovation, insight, intuition, inspiration is shaped like the number one because it's like a divine, it's an antenna between you and the divine. It's alignment. Oh, interesting. The number one and the I, they're very connected that way. So it's all about those I words, independence, inspiration, innovation, and really being the first at something. When you see that number in your life word, you're that life path. It's about learning how to be comfortable doing something new, being independent, being innovative, and really being okay with that first energy because we can have a lot of fears around that. You know, if you're doing something not validated by other people, you're like, wait a minute, I don't see it anywhere. So maybe it's not good. Mm -hmm. So it's about having the confidence to be independent and, and innovative. Two is the second number. So, so really, where was one is about independence, two is all about partnership because two likes everything in pairs, right? Mm -hmm. So that's about harmony, relationships, balance. It's more sensitive because when you bring someone else in there, someone you're, you're more inclined to be attuned to other people's feelings. So it's about learning balance within yourself and listening to your intuition and managing your sensitivity. So really paying attention to finding that balance within yourself, even when you're being accommodating towards other people, it's finding that balance in that center. Three is the number of creativity because Two people can create a third entity with the pure act of you're creating. Hmm. So it's the number of creation, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the divine trinity. This is about the, your, your ability to be a creator. It's a very creative number. It's very sensitive as well, emotionally expressive, verbally oriented, joyful ultimately. But threes can tend to get into self-doubt. Anytime you're in the creative process, again, you can doubt yourself. The odd numbers tend to have more of that Un instability as the even numbers are more about stability. Hmm. So the even numbers tend to be more practical, whereas the odd numbers tend to be more creative. So we have four, which is about practicality, <laughs> <laughs> squaring your corners. There are still a lot of very creative fours, but they'll do things. It's very family oriented. So they'll want to still have a very stable life for their family, or they want to teach and pass on some kind of legacy. It's very much about being the authority, being the leader. Five comes and breaks up the stability of number four and says, we want to change. So fives are very freedom oriented, very exciting, very dramatic in a way. So five is all about trying new things. Five is one of those life paths that, again, will probably have many different careers or many different places or it's very much about variety and change and freedom. And so with relationships, employment, all of that stuff, and they also are associated with groups. So they really want to mix it up with groups and, and learning and lots of different things. Fives really want a lot of different experiences. Now, six comes along after all that shaking up of the five and says, we want to create harmony and balance again. If you look at the number six, it's shaped like a pregnant woman. Mm. <laughs> six is very nurturing. So even if sixes don't have children, they have pets they, or plants. So they love to nurture. 
it's very creative. It's very sensitive, very emotionally sensitive. Because you can imagine like if you're pregnant, like how sensitive you are. Sixes are like that all the time. And they have the more most psychic noses of anyone I've ever, like they'll be nurses because they like to nurture and they'll be like, I can smell when someone's sick or sick. Like their sixes are very much like that. And they, they like to heal and create harmony and beauty, love. Again, it's very sensitive though. So those are the polarities of it, right? I know some numbers sound better than others, but I'm like, we all have our challenges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a six. So oh. it's interesting about the emotional sensitivity. I'd say that's something that's developed later, much later in life. So Nurturing though, right? Yes. And responsible for other people. Yes, overly so. The sixes are overly responsible. They're super protective. They're the perfectionist number as well. And they're the ones that say, you know, I don't trust other people to do this right. So I'm just going to do this for everybody else. <laughs> Does that make more sense? Yeah. <laughs> um, sevens need a lot of alone time hmm. especially by the water seven is a number of movement so they tend to be very good swimmers or they like to walk or they like to move very spiritual and also the one five and sevens tend to be in their heads a lot so they'll need to balance that mental psychic energy with alone time with movement with peace and quiet you know, when sevens are parents, it's it can be really hard for them to take that alone time, but you really, really, really have to. Or they tend to like a work alone and they love research. They love delving into things. It's like a laser. It's like, <laughs> if you look at it, it's like a lightning. Hmm. So they, they love to delve, go look in the past, dig for the truth. Great psychics, great mystics also. It's kind of otherworldly. So you have eight, which you look at that, that's the affinity symbol. So eight is the number associated with material and spiritual wealth and abundance. A lot of spiritual people have no idea like how they're eights because they're like, that has definitely not been my thing or I don't like money or whatever. And they're here to learn about it. They're here to learn how to be okay with having great status, great power, great responsibility. And um, their managers, they're natural big picture people. So they're not like tiny, small picture people. They, they're large and in charge. And the lesson is being okay with that and being okay with managing money, being okay with managing status, being okay with all of that. Uh, you know, a lot of eights have had past lives. Oh, I don't know if your people believe in that, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, upcoming episode <laughs> where um you know it didn't end well because of that like their power got them into trouble or whatever and so they're afraid of it so it's really learning how to be okay with those things and then nine being the last life path number it's about learning how to really be okay with being an individual with with not being the same as everybody else with maybe realizing that you have all of the gifts inside of you and you're never going to learn from everybody else like what's right for you. And it's really about learning how to be okay with that and also letting go of your past because it is the last of the single digit numbers. So it's a letting, a lot of the life is about letting go. Hmm. Nines have a lot of deeper spiritual lessons sometimes because it's the last part of a karmic cycle. So they're meant to be teachers and counselors a lot of times. Yeah, and it's interesting to me how once I found out about life path numbers, how so many of my friends and partners have been threes and nines. Yeah. You know, me being a six. So notice how certain numbers go together. Yeah, um, 157, 248, and 369 are all part of the same trilogies. So yeah, I'm a 369 person myself. <laughs> oh. My whole chart pretty much. Sometimes two. Two goes with 369 because they're all intuitive numbers. Oh, okay. I've heard of a, a rising sign where you add the day of your birthday, like for me, the 31st. So that would make me a four, where a four is what I present myself to others. I'm not sure what that term is. Well, there's the birth date, which is the day you're born. But the personality number tends to be the month plus day, but the day you're born, like if you're born on the 31st, that tells you a lot of what your gifts are. So oh. 31, you have the three of communication and expression, which of course, right, you're doing a podcast and the one of, indiv you know, being an individual, being new, but the four are very practical and grounded. So you're doing a podcast about the practical <laughs> <laughs> It all falls into place. <laughs> it is. It all comes together. <laughs> like I said, a lot of fours can be very creative, but they want to be practical. It's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> how, how it really does all come together. That's why I said it's shockingly accurate. 
like spooky. Um, that's why I love it. Yeah. Well, I can see how just knowing your life path number, that would be enough to keep you busy for quite a while. Oh gosh. It really took me years to really delve into them and understand them. And it's a never ending process. There's so much, you know, you look in the Olympics, like the swimmers, a lot of them have the sevens in their charts and a lot of gymnasts have eights because they love doing the loopy. It's just funny. Like a lot of fours or realtors because four is about structure and foundations. So a lot of fours are chiropractors or realtors because they like dealing with foundations like bones, you know, so it's just a thing. It's like odd. It's amazing. Yeah. I love how that works out. Yeah. And a lot of interior designers are sixes. Like it's just, it really is a thing. You can't, can't ignore it after, so after you know it, you can't go back. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to go down that rabbit hole and keep going. Take the blue (laughs) pill. Don't look back. You don't even try it. Yeah. So another aspect that I love about numerology is your house number. Yes. I actually just hired an illustrator to make drawings of each house's too. Nice. Their personalities are so distinct. And again, I've lived this. I was very nervous to move into a 16 home. And, you know, people who move into 16 homes often have roof issues because 16 in the tarot is the tower with the roof coming up. Anyway, Hmm. that number wasn't compatible with my life path. And yes, I have a calculator on carriesimmons.com forward slash calculator. You'll see the house number there too. And it takes you to the blog post about it. And that's K-A-R-I-S-A-M-U-E-L-S dot com. So let me explain the house numerology, just how to calculate it so people understand. It's your personal house or personal apartment number. So if you live at like 2442 Elm Street, apartment D, you're going to be D, which adds up to four. But let's say you live in um, 1305 Maple Street. So it's the number. If that's a house, then it's your personal number. Forget about the street name. So like 1305, you'd have one plus three plus O plus five. You'd be in a nine house. So you can apply a lot of those numbers we just talked about to that. So it's either your personal house number or personal apartment number. It's the one that's more personal to you. That's the number that you take. Oh, that's an interesting distinction. So for apartments, you only pay attention to your unit. The building has its own number and it's nice to be compatible with that, but most specifically your unit, including the letter. Okay. Because it's what's most personal to you. Of course, the general building has an influence, but when you're looking at your specific, oh, should I move into this apartment type of thing? You want to look at your apartment number or letter or both. Okay. So then when we think of the nine numbers, would the same energies kind of apply to the house? Yes. And so 13D, for instance, would be one plus three plus D, which is four. So it's eight. But yes, the same personalities. Oddly enough, that is my most popular blog post, which is part part of why I wanted these fun illustrations to just make the personality so clear. Mm -hmm. But yes, houses have personalities. And the thing about the numerology of the house, you know, sixes are very connected to homes, by the way, right? (laughs) With homes, the most important thing is how you feel in it, overriding everything. Same thing with numbers. People are like, should I date a Leo? I'm like, what are they like? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> tell me, do you like them? Don't ask me. <laughs> they could be on either polarity. You know, some of my best friends are numbers that people would say are conflicted, whatever, but 30 years, still best friends. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it, it's an art and a science, right? There's definitely, if, you, if it feels good, then you're probably falling on the positive side of the spectrum of that number, but you can see the general energy of it. So now when it comes to your life path number, is it fair to say that your life path is more compatible with certain house numbers? Yes. Like I love living in six homes Mm -hmm. because I'm a three, six, nine person. If you're a four life path, you might like four or an eight home where you're just working or your family, you know, their family safe or what, you know, it's just, but you may want to mix it up and live in a five home to give you a little bit more excitement. Depends on what you're craving. Yeah. So a home could also help you move into certain aspects or personalities. Absolutely. Like if you have been working so hard, you might want to live in a five home or something like that just to like cha-cha-cha a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I've also heard that say you don't like the number of your home, you can hang up a number that will then offset. Yes. And you know, I actually have that written on my blog post and I am going to take that off because 
it changes it a bit, but it can be very complicated which number you put on the wall. Like you could be putting on a number like, let's say you live in a seven house and it's feeling isolated and you want an eight house and you put a one there. One is going to be more isolating too. You could be looking at a one all the time. So it gets very Mm. confusing. And the other thing is it definitely changes the vibration, but I've done some experiments with this. And that's why it's funny. I have a note for myself this week to take it off my blog post. I even have it written there, but I have experienced it because when I lived in that 16 home, which was the only home I really felt the need to change, I still, you know, needed to move ultimately. Mm -hmm. It didn't resonate with me, even though I put the two there or whatever, you know, it still wasn't the right place for me ultimately. And that's why I say you can change the vibration and seeing that number inside your door will definitely have a subconscious effect, right? Like if you have a three inside your door, you're going to be thinking creativity. Hmm. But ultimately, I feel the home has its own guardians, its own angels, its own energy. It's like you've seen these places in retail that'll be like, oh, we're the fifth restaurant in three years. Everything has its own energy, right? You almost can't fight the energy too much. You have to find the perfect alignment. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to then how people can use numerology and apply it to their life to start to tune in or ride those waves of the forecast. So when it comes to your personality number, how does that interact with, say, the month or the year? How can people start applying it to their lives? And again, I have this in the book so that people can just have this all in one place. And I oh, wonderful! do have this on my site if you want to look up your year number or whatever. So you take your day and month of birth. Let's say it's 514. You're born May 14th. You take the 5 plus 1 plus 4 equals 10. And then you would add 1 plus 0 to get 1. Let's say you're in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Two plus zero plus one plus six is nine. You add the one from your day and month. You're not using your year of birth when you're looking at your personal year. Okay. So it'd be the birth month, day, and then the current year. And again, it's the same kind of personality for the year. Those are the lessons. Instead of your life path lessons, you have throughout the year. And this is the calendar year. Again, some people do it birthday to birthday, but I found over time calendar year to calendar year is most accurate. Hmm. What type of a month would September 2016 be? Well, 2016 is a nine universal year and September is a nine universal month. And when you add the nine month to the nine year, you get another nine because it's 18 and one plus eight equals nine. So Hmm. that's a lot of nines. Yeah. And every day in September is going to be a triple day. So nine is going to be a month of culmination, celebration, and endings letting go. It's a big month for letting go. Mm. It's a number where you really have to listen to your intuition. Now in 2017, it's a one year. I want people to like get to know the basics enough because it's kind of like teaching people how to read the weather. Yeah. It's okay. Just tune into the forecast. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because yeah, like I don't want people to, their heads to spin so much that they don't do any of it. Yeah. (laughs) What I would say is stick with the basics you, you can get reports that have your month to month or your yearly thing. And I would probably recommend that if you want to know it, because it's so overwhelming to just learn it all at once. I would say to people, get the basics of your life path number, learn other people's life path numbers and start looking around and making your own assessments of what that means. See how these interpretations apply to them. That will give you an opportunity to learn the numbers And then you could start playing around. Right. That's great advice. I really like the idea of just going to a professional, having them summarize everything. And yeah, just stick to the basic level to begin with. Get a report or watch forecasts or just leave that to the people, the geeks. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And just learn the numbers. Just learn those numbers and then start paying attention. And that's what I would recommend at first. Yeah. And your Facebook posts, I think, are perfect for beginners because you summarize what's going on and they can tune in and ride that wave and see how it affects their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Let me do that for you. Um, It could be overwhelming and confusing otherwise, I think. Can you give some examples of how numerology has benefited yourself or a client? With myself, it helped me learn my life lessons and understand why I'm a certain way. There's a sense of relief when you know who you really are and and can let yourself off the hook for not being that way. And then in terms of the forecast, 
Oh, it's so helpful. Like this year, I'm in a three year. So I'm doing creative stuff. I'll get to the practical stuff next year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm doing a lot of stuff that involve illustrations or, or creative projects or publishing books or things like that, because I'm I want to maximize this energy. Hmm. I love that. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to square my corners. I'll do that next year. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm in the creative process. So if you really know what cycle you're in, you won't try to be something else. Yeah. And I really love how you describe how numerology can help move you into acceptance into who you are. And that's definitely how it's affected my life. Like this is a five year for me. Mm -hmm. And so just understanding that, hey, if I want to relax a little more or have more fun or do more traveling this year it's okay because last year was such a building year Mm -hmm. and getting things in order Mm -hmm. and speaking like you launch a podcast five is associated with media so yeah oh is it oh okay i didn't know that yeah so interesting well this has been very insightful and i can see how there's just so much more to learn if listeners want to get in touch with you, they can go to your website, carriesamuels.com. Yeah. And now I'm not doing any personal consultations anymore. So I highly recommend they download that ebook and go on my blog and put in the search term numerology and see what else comes up or just even anything that comes up. There may be something else there that is interesting uh, for you and play around. And I would suggest connecting on my Facebook page and or YouTube as well, because the forecast will be helpful. And again, let let the geeks do it for yeah. you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This was very insightful. Um, before I let you go, I wanted to finish the interview with some fun questions that I ask of all my guests, oh, sure. just to help listeners get to know you better, like a more personal side of you. Okay. So the first question is, what type of car would you be and why? Well, I have a Subaru. So I guess that's my, um, maybe it's the practical Virgo in me and they're, (laughs) they're made, they're made to last and there's nothing, what you see is what you get with them. They're reliable and practical and they endure the test of time. Yes, they do. That's a great car. Yeah. Mm, Love it. That will last forever. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, the second question is what was the worst thing you got in trouble for with your parents? Oh, geez. Apparently, I didn't get enough trouble with my parents because I did a lot of (laughs) crazy things and... You did a lot of crazy things and did not get caught for them? Yeah, like I went away to Colorado for a week and they didn't even know I was gone. (laughs) I was always so independent. Um, I'll tell you, they were very upset when I quit graduate school two and a half years into a three-year program. So I was grown up by then, but they they were not happy about that. But I did it anyway. I never looked back. Yeah, and look how well it's paid off. So I know, right? Like I wasn't meant to do theater. Yeah. Um, And lastly, what is the number one thing on your bucket list? The first thing that came to me was the Galapagos Islands. But I also want to go to Italy. And I don't eat gluten here, but I would just go and eat as much gluten (laughs) as I possibly can here. I I have such a not that kind of diet, but I would go there and just eat my way around the country. So, well, you can't go there and not have a bunch of pasta. And that's what I mean. So I'm just like, I, I'll, I won't do it here. I don't want to do it here because I'm like, that's not worth it here. But <laughs> I would definitely go to Italy and eat my way around there. <laughs> Oh, well, that's awesome. All right. Well, thank you again so much for doing this. I think there will be plenty of resources for beginners to get familiar with numerology from your site and apply it to their life and ride that wave. Yeah, I make it easy peasy. All right. Well, thanks, Carrie. This was uh, this was awesome. Thank you for having me. It's been such a joy. As I was researching articles for the Woo Woo News Corner, I came across many blog posts about the significance of numbers in the Bible. It's interesting to me that many Christian denominations fully endorse biblical numerology and the symbolic meanings of numbers in the Bible. I'll also add that every post about biblical numerology was very clear that numerology was not to be used for predicting the future, as that enters the world of divination, which is considered the work of the devil consider yourself warned. That said, here are the significance of numbers in the Bible. The number one denotes absolute singleness and the oneness of the Godhead, such as the Lord our God is one. The number two symbolizes union and partnership. For example, two cherubim guarded the Ark of the Covenant, 
and the disciples were sent two by two, as well as the animals in Noah's Ark being seated in pairs. The number three signifies completion, perfection, and unity. Examples are the Holy Trinity, as well as Jonah spending three days in the belly of the whale. The number four relates to the earth and creation, such as four seasons and the four directions of north, south, east, west. The number five is associated with grace. There were five Levitical offerings, and Jesus multiplied five loaves of bread to feed 5,000 people. The number six is the number of man and human weakness. Adam and Eve were created on the sixth day. A Hebrew slave was to serve six years, and six is associated with Satan's temptation of Jesus. The number seven refers to the number of God, divine perfection, or completeness. God rested on the seventh day after creating the earth. Seven demons were sent out from Mary Magdalene. And in Revelations, there are seven churches, seven angels to the seven churches, seven seals, etc. The number eight signifies new beginnings. Eight people survived the flood. Circumcision took place on the eighth day. And Abraham had eight sons. The number nine means fullness of blessing, divine completeness, and finality. Christ died at the ninth hour, and Yom Kippur begins at sunset on the ninth day of the seventh month. And last, but not least, 666 marks the number of the beast, aka the Antichrist. Thank you for tuning in to Woo Woo for the Skeptic. For more on the show, visit wooofortheskeptic.com, or for more on me, check out kimpolander.com. And now for your moment of woo. This quote comes from the comedian Phyllis Diller. I've tried Buddhism, Scientology, Numerology, Transcendental Meditation, Kabbalah, Tai Chi, Feng Shui, and Deepak Chopra. But I find straight gin works the best. Have a great week, everyone.